Good morning. My name is Ryan Bast of the Motor Safety Association, and I'd like to welcome you to this morning's webinar on safety goal setting. You may have noted that your microphones are muted, and they will remain muted throughout the duration of the webinar. However, feel free to type in any questions or comments as we go into the question box. And I see some of you have already figured that out and put a few notes in, so I appreciate that. And as we go through the webinar, feel free to engage by participating through the question box. So some of the items that I will discuss today include, what is a safety goal? And that's why we're here today, to determine that and learn a bit about safety goals. And I'll highlight the process of using SMART goals and how that works to give you a better understanding of that framework. We'll spend some time talking about setting goals, whether it be at the committee level or at the corporate level or within your business. We'll touch a little bit on how do we measure our safety goals using such indicators as leading and lagging indicators and spend a little time on that model as well as we'll speak to a measurement policy and how that policy is important for coordinating our measurement process as well as our safety goal setting. And we'll summarize with some resources and templates once the webinar concludes. So no need to uh, jot down a bunch of notes. Uh, all the templates will be provided that I'll speak to today. And if there is anything that you require additionally, feel free to contact uh, the association once the webinar concludes. And our contact information will be provided once the webinar wraps up. And if you really enjoyed this webinar, it'll be on YouTube if you have to leave during the webinar today, as well as our other pre-recorded webinars are already on YouTube. And I'll explain how to get to those once the webinar is wrapping up. So what exactly is a goal? Well, a goal is defined as the object of a person's ambition or effort and aim or desired result. And when I look at this, has your business set safety goals for the year? And why not kick off our webinar with this uh, poll question, just to get everyone engaged and to help me kind of figure out where we're, where we're at uh, with uh, the goal setting to uh, see where uh, our participants are at today. So I'm going to uh, give you a chance here to uh, participate in the poll. And uh, I'll give you a few seconds, and then we will bring up those results. All right, I'm going to close the poll now, and we will share that. And it looks like we're sitting at 67% uh, yes and 33% no. So thank you for uh, being able to share that. and. So if you're in that 33%, why not? Why haven't you set your goals? And I find too, sometimes people may be a bit afraid to set their goal because they may wonder, what if I don't achieve them? But I look at this from the opposite framework. What if you do achieve your goals? And how positive that can be. So be positive when you are setting your goals. Uh, sometimes, as I said, it's okay not to achieve your goals, but what if you do achieve your goals? And I know personally, I've had uh, some successes when I write down my goals, post my goals and hold myself to them. And I'd ask you to do the same uh, when we look at how to set goals. So get your goals, get them documented and share them. And I'll go through some ways of how we can set those goals in the coming slides. So the first example is a tool called SMART goals. And some of you are probably familiar with this and may use SMART goals already. Uh, it's an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And if we use each of those letters of the acronym in our goal setting process, we'll be successful in this journey of setting goals. And the next three slides, I'll walk you through the process of setting SMART goals. 
So again, when we look at SMART goals, the first letter is S, that the goals need to be specific. And specific to what do we want to accomplish at our organization? I'm going to frame the example of SMART goals on these three um, ideas or potential goal setting areas through the SMART goal setting template. We'll look at safety committees, inspections at your facility, and the core program. So I'm just going to use those three as examples and apply the SMART goal tool to those examples as we progress through this um, framework of talking about SMART goals. So first off, what's a specific goal that well, we could look to for occupational health and community members? And feel free to type this into the question box when it comes to uh, participation. And I'll highlight that and provide some examples. Uh, actually, for any of these, when it comes to facility inspections or core program, what's anything specific that we could look at measuring? So I'll, I'll give you a little bit of time to uh, to think about that while you, you put that in, and I'll uh, I'll be I'll be sharing some of my uh, my thoughts and you know as we as we look at these. Uh, someone suggested training, and that's absolutely right. So specific training for committee members could be level one and level two committee training. So that's a specific goal when it comes to respect to setting for your safety committee members. When we look at facility inspections, a specific goal could be that we set up a site-specific process, including templates for each location, and we complete those regularly. That could be a specific goal. When we look at core certification or a certificate of recognition, a specific goal, in fact, could be to be core certified to receive that certificate. So those are just some examples of specific goals uh, in regards to those three examples. But how can we measure those, looking at the progress of our goals? Well, when we look at measuring safety committee training, uh, this could be measured through competency, whether it be we received a certificate of completion for level one and two training. The quiz scores could also be used. We can also see inspections and how do we measure inspections? And I have on here completion rates. S essentially, did we say what we are going to do when it came to our inspection plan or process? So if we said that we were going to do daily inspections of vehicle hoists that were used that day, did we complete that? So that's a measurable inspection item that we can look at by completion rates. And also the, the core program, this can be measured through completing an audit or a baseline audit. And I've seen some great comments coming in. I love it. Please, uh, please keep those coming in. And again, I provide some suggestions on the slides, but um, add your comments and suggestions. And uh, someone mentioned about uh, meeting times for legislated meetings. That's a great measurable for safety committee meetings. And using that documentation piece for accountability that we're, we're signing off on our record keeping for committee meeting minutes and inspections. So that's that's fantastic. I, I just really can't tell you how much I appreciate that engagement this morning. The next letter we look at is A for achievable. So is it within your authority or ability to accomplish or achieve the safety goals? And I ask you this to really think about that. Did you have the necessary tools and resources available to achieve your safety goals? And I could think of the last year and the current situation we're in right now. Uh, you may have had to pivot your training processes uh, and programs from traditional classroom style to virtual live training. Maybe there was a lack of training providers, which would hamper your ability to see achievable training for your safety committee. Did that happen to anybody I'm curious about? Please let me know in the question box. Or when I look at inspections, was it reasonable to expect that your inspections results could be achieved? 
Well, MSA can help you do inspections and come to your site while following the Saskatchewan Health Authority COVID-19 guidelines, as well as we can provide you with inspection templates and training. So the inspections, I believe, would be achievable, but I, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what others would have to say. And even when I, I think about the core program, this um, could be achievable. We have provide templates on our website. We have a safety management system online, a program that allows you to build and tweak yeah, your program by, by providing templates. We can do a baseline on it to prepare you. So that could be achievable based on that type of support. I've seen a comment about organizations' policies are in place, and that would also help you uh, in support of achieving your goals. So those are fantastic comments. Can we realistically achieve our goals? I ask you, I'm going to launch another poll question, but is it realistic to expect that you can train your committee members during a pandemic? Were you able to source safety training last year with the COVID-19 pandemic? I'll give you a few seconds to, to chew on that and, uh, and to comment uh, on the poll. And I'll, I'll speak to the rest of the points while, while you answer that, uh, uh, that, that process here. So when I look at training, for safety committee, committee members, was that an option? And I know some uh, uh, people probably in the second quarter of the year, it may not have been, a, been an option until a lot of groups and organizations uh, were able to, uh, you know, adapt and um, uh, proceed. So by the looks of the poll, um, this wasn't a barrier of the pandemic to receiving training. So that's that's a great uh, a great engagement piece uh, that helps uh, helps us better understand. And inspections, were your inspections um, being able to comp be completed timely? And I, I think of, of this from a goal setting perspective to the fact that if we proactively plan our inspections and we map out uh, a plan, uh, this should very much be a realistic expectation to achieve. And when I think about core certification, I can honestly say this may or may not be realistic and this should never be an individual goal because core is a staff goal or an organizational goal. It isn't something to put on the safety person's shoulder that saying I want to be core certified by December 31st because it involves more than just you as an individual. It is a collective effort. But with that being said, we can offer those supports uh, and, and templates and different tools necessary to help uh, your group or your business uh, obtain that certification. Lastly, when I look at SMART goals, I look at the fact, are they timely? When exactly do you want to accomplish your safety goals? So being able to set time-bound real target dates for your safety initiatives will help you be successful. If I have a goal of saying, I want to have our safety committee members trained, that's fantastic. But when and how do I achieve that? That's where a training plan or training matrix will suit you well. And I'll just ask through the question box, this isn't a poll question, if your business has a training plan available. So I'll give you a second to think about that. If you don't, you're in luck because all attendees of today's webinar will receive a training matrix spreadsheet. And I've got it, or I should say, we have it filled out with various courses that you can utilize or you can adjust that to make that fit your own needs. And you can add your staff's names into it. And this can be used as a time-bound training, training plan. 
because you can look at your course providers, the course needs, and fill in what's in progress and the dates that that training is received. So that's a fantastic tool that will help you um, reach your timely goals as far as a training plan is concerned. Next, I look at target dates for inspection results. You need to be able to account for in your action plan, who is going to do what to carry out those processes and when will they be achieved in a timely fashion? ASAP is not a timely date. Use today's date if you want to get it done today. But just again, be aware that when we are setting goals, when it comes to in regards to inspections, be timely and hold people to that account that we are using time bound goals. And again, when we look at uh, course certification or a baseline, this is something that uh, we can provide and assist you with in a timely fashion, uh, doing those audits. We do a lot of stuff off site now, just in regards to the uh, framework of the guidelines of the health authority. That gives you an idea of how you can apply the SMART goals to three specific examples, those being training your safety committee, carrying out inspections at your organization, as well as working towards core certification. So I'm gonna switch it up just slightly now and, and speak to you in the next few slides about goal setting. And this will be specific now to safety committees. And I'll ask you in the question box to comment. Does your safety committee have written safety goals? I would love to hear this uh, response. And while I await that response, I, I really believe that if they don't, all safety committees should work collaboratively in a teamwork fashion to develop safety goals for that business that they represent or that location. So that's so important, setting those goals. And not only should you set them, document them and post them on your safety boards. That's, that's, those are fantastic steps, but I find sometimes when things get posted on the safety board, it's first and foremost, until someone else puts an, a newer poster uh, in front of it or something else grabs the attention from, you, from your safety goals. So keep those posted. But what you can do is add as a standing item on your safety committee meeting agenda to revisit your safety goals. And I really think this is doable because I, I know I've read a lot of safety committee meeting minutes and sometimes the new business area is a little thin or a little weak where Maybe if we, we add safety goals to that new business section, it allows us to take some time to revisit that at each safety committee meeting. Are we reaching our goals? Uh, where are we at as far as progress is concerned? And I've seen a few people say that, uh, no, they haven't set any safety goals at their safety committee. And um, so this is a, perhaps a good, a good reminder or a good opportunity. The next one I look to when we look at goal setting is your corporate goals from your corporation. And this may not be applicable to everyone, but if your business is represented by a corporation that could even be out of country, a different pro province, a different city, they may have goals that have been generated by the senior executive or corporate leadership team, which are top down. And generally, these safety goals align with your mission and vision and values of that corporation. And it's up to each location or branch to reach those corporate safety goals. So you may have something like this coming from head office, but I, that's why I spoke to the last slide uh, and setting goals locally, whether it be at your safety committee level and I'll speak to that on this slide, those locational goals, because sometimes like if your head office is in the United States uh, or in Ontario, 
it, it's, those goals are good when they align to the mission and vision and values of your organization, but it's nice to set your own goals because you know the specific needs of the location and site. You can set how stringent you want those goals to be at your organization. And that's where it involves the culture. What's the culture of your organization? And that will determine how far they're going to go with the goal setting. Setting those uh, goals at each location will also help promote engagement, getting not only your safety committee involved, getting all staff involved, asking them perhaps if you're having a staff meeting, what are some areas that we can work on as a business for our safety needs this year? The committee can follow up with those needs and ensure that uh, we're working through those but it's just a good plan to have those uh, safety goals uh, at a locational basis. And it could also be fun to uh, have that friendly competition if you have multiple locations and seeing if your location reached its safety goals or not. So that's a little bit of some ideas um, from the different locations, whether it be at your safety committee, corporate top-down goals, or locational goal setting. So now that we're talking about setting goals, are we looking forward or are we looking in our rear view mirror when we're setting goals? And a lot of people sometimes will mix up the difference between leading indicators for measuring goals or lagging indicators. And it really is important in a safety management system or in your goal setting process to measure both. I'm going to explain both of them to you, and I really want uh, some questions or comments if you're not sure, because this is sometimes an area where people get hung up on. So to define a leading indicator, these are proactive metrics that measure prevention efforts and can be observed and recorded prior to an injury. These goals are proactive and not reactive. So you're probably wondering, what do you mean by that? Well, let's look at some examples, and I hope this will help framework uh, leading indicators. Taking a look at what is your completion rate of a safety activity versus what was actually scheduled. And I find this is a great way of explaining this. If we're trying to, if we, for example, set a goal that we want to complete 10 hazard risk assessments this month at our organization. And we completed seven of them. Well, we completed 70% of that goal. So we looked at the completion rate of a safety activity versus scheduled versus what we actually achieved. The same could be said about inspections. If we had a plan, uh, I spoke about vehicle hoists earlier, and at, at our automotive dealership, we use our vehicle hoists every day. So I would expect to see a pre-use inspection done on those hoists daily. So I can look back and see, did we complete those inspections pre-use on those automotive hoists? So you can see, we're looking at measuring if an activity scheduled was actually achieved. We could do the same for toolbox talks. We plan to do a toolbox talk every week at our organization. So we've got 52 weeks in the year. We did 47 of them. So we didn't quite reach our goal or training. We, tra we plan to train all of our staff on aerial work platforms, the ones that use aerial work platforms, or the people who use forklifts. Do we offer that powered mobile equipment training? So did we, in fact, reach and achieve what our training plan indicated? So leading indicators help to look at those proactive activities. And I've got a great tool that our association uses called perception surveys. And I'm just gonna ask in the question box, how many of you have ever completed a safety perception survey before? 
whether it be motor safeties or somebody else's. And these safety surveys are proactive tools which are anonymous and it allows for frontline worker participation and engagement to gather their safety perceptions. And I, I, I get really passionate about this because this is exactly as an organization what you want to achieve. You want that engagement and comments and participation from your frontline staff and workers. By being able to gather that through a perception survey, you're able to gather data as it relates to various measurable items within a safety management system. And I'll use an example to, to hopefully uh, hit this one home. When I look at, uh, so a survey may have questions around emergency response. And if the survey respondents seem to answer that question perhaps unfavorably, that they may have questions, that they don't feel that your organization is prepared for emergency response uh, or it scores a weaker score, you've just received some priceless information that you have an opportunity to do something about before you run into a situation where you need emergency response plans um, utilized or why practice a fire drill in a fire um, when you need to be prepared in the event of these emergency response activities. So that's the real value of a safety perception survey. It takes proactive leading information and data and it allows the organization to, in fact, deal with this before we react to it. And some of the comments coming in is that, uh, yeah, we've had participation in surveys. So that's just fantastic. Uh, we've been doing this for a very long time, our safety perception surveys. And I'll put an offer out there today. If your business wants to do safety perception surveys, let us know. It takes about 10 minutes per staff member to complete a survey, and we will give you a report and action plan where we can graph the uh, areas uh, and how the responses were calculated and give you some key points to work on proactively. So this is a great tool that you can use, which could help you set your safety goals. So once you said, hey, I'm gonna use setting a survey as a goal, fantastic. All right, I'm gonna switch gears and talk about lagging indicators. These are reactive measures that track reactive outcomes, such as an injury that has already occurred. These reactive processes deal with results or activities that have occurred or are in the past. And this is generally what I see a lot of, that businesses do a fantastic job of recording what's already happened. So they're able to measure their duration or days lost per claim rate, how many WCB claims they had this year, or they've got graphs showing that we had 10 claims last year and we've had uh, three claims in the first quarter of this year. So I'm not speaking negatively. This is very important to measure our lagging goals to see where we're at uh, because you need to really do both of these tools in utilizing leading indicators and lagging indicators. I said, you can't look forward unless you look backward as well and know where you, or know where you're at when you're measuring uh, your systems when it comes to goal setting. So I, ho I hope that this clarifies the differences. The leading indicators influence future performance and you can measure those goals in comparison to what you've actually achieved. And lagging are anal analyzing our past performances. So I hope that uh, clarifies those two uh, tools that can be used for measuring your goal setting processes. What can help you as well in your goal setting is having a measurement policy in place. And I'm gonna ask you, I'm just gonna launch a quick poll question right now. Does your business have a measurement policy in place when it comes to safety goals? 
I'll give you a, a few uh, uh, seconds here to, to respond. And looking at a, a measurement policy statement, this is something that you can bundle together to, in fact, um, put all your goal setting into one process. And it looks like we're, we're a little weak in this category. 36% uh, of our businesses have a measurement policy uh, and 64% do not. Fair enough. But at the end of today's webinar, we will have 100% of our businesses having a measurement policy because you will be receiving one from, from me. And uh, as I was saying before, being able to bundle your goal setting processes, uh, looking at both reactive and proactive measurements into a policy is essential. This should be no different than your safety policy statement for the business or your emergency response policy statement. Measurement is a element in a safety management system. We measure that in our certification programs and that's why it's so important that people take the time to utilize this measurement policy and define what their process is for their safety efforts or goals that they plan to measure. And as mentioned, um, all attendees will be receiving a template with this today. So it's not only um, good to have that template, you need to, um, it's going to offer some opportunity for you to uh, tweak it to make it your own. You can edit that document. And by doing so, we need to be able to share it with our management supervisors, employees, get them involved. This, your policy for goal setting really affects the direction that your organization takes uh, for the year when we look at safety goal setting or whatever duration or period you choose to measure. Uh, we put this goal or this webinar in the first quarter of the year because it allows for us, if we haven't done our goal setting for the year, let's do it. Um, having that policy can really help define where you're going. And as mentioned, it's, it's important that our stakeholders, our management, supervisors, and frontline workers are all very much aware of the measurement policy and they're involved. That's a key piece, being involved and engaged in the process. And I'll tell you why. Being involved is going to guarantee a larger success opportunity for your goals. And once we achieve those larger successes, it's important to celebrate and take time to recognize those goals that were achieved. Because sometimes it's not easy if when we see a, a shift in safety culture, which generally takes years to happen within an organization to go from perhaps we've been having safety meetings quarterly to having a, a fully effective safety management system that's working and we're seeing a reduction in our frequency rates, our durations are coming down, our severity of our injuries, and we're really striving towards that mission zero. These are just fantastic uh, things that we need to celebrate uh, and reflect on once we achieve these at our businesses. So taking the time to uh, to showcase that is, is so important in the recognition of once you actually re receive those safety goals, uh, I should say achieve safety goals at the organization. How many people celebrate goals that they've achieved? I'd like to, uh, to see that in the, in the question box. Uh, have you taken the time? I know some places have done pizza parties or they've uh, um, looked at different ways of, of recognizing their goals achieved. And I was very careful here with the slide is we recognize, but we don't make it lucrative. Okay, so lucrative is where everyone's going to get a leather jacket if we reach our safety goals. We have to be careful that we don't perhaps uh, have a goal or, or a reward that could perhaps increase some suppression. And I'm not saying that happens, but I just want to mention it that uh, 
celebrating goals is so important and um, you know a pizza party is is not unreasonable or maybe it is right now during covid but uh, again just being able to uh, to reflect on that journey uh, a thank you or um, a message from the most senior person in the organization does go a long way as well in celebrating those goals achieved so some tools that you can use to uh, reach your safety goals. I will be providing you with a goal setting template. And this is pre-filled out with different categories to help you set your safety goals. Uh, some of the categories could include training, um, it could include investigations, it could include um, emergency response drills. So these are all different facets that you can use to give you ideas when you set your safety goals. Um, this is a document, of course, that you can edit and any of the goals on there you can, you can use and fill out or feel free to adjust it to whatever fits your organization. And if you're one of those businesses I spoke about earlier that may not always have a lot to speak about at your safety committee meeting, bring that goal setting template to your next committee meeting. And that could be a great point to get started on. And you can use that as a framework uh, to work towards setting goals for the year. So I'm going to get us close to wrapping up and, and give you some different tools. Uh, as I mentioned, the safety perception survey, um, again, any of these items, they come at no additional charge. I'm not out trying to sell you anything here today. Our members have access to these, these services and programs. So the perception surveys are something we can set up for you if you're interested in getting that engagement piece started on where to perhaps uh, focus your efforts strategically in your goal setting process. We do have that measurement policy which you're gonna receive and I encourage you to set that up if you don't already have it. If you're in that 33% uh, of businesses that do have it, there's a lot that don't. So use that measurement policy, no different than any other policy at your organization. So that's gonna be coming your way, as well as that safety goal setting template that I spoke about. You can use that to, to set your goals at your organization or your committee or your location. We also have that uh, training matrix, and that's that's going to save you a lot of work. If you don't have one of these in place already, you can fill that in, adjust it to the courses based on the needs of your business, as well as the uh, staff. Uh, you can fill them in to ensure that you have a solid training plan. And that's a good leading indicator because we can measure that and we can ensure that we're filling those training needs and competencies. Um, so something, um, so that those are some of the samples that you will receive. And once the webinar concludes, there will also be an evaluation survey. Which now that I read this, that's that's a lagging indicator that I can use to measure the engagement and the survey. So that's that's kind of funny when I, I think I think about that in goal setting. That uh, so I have a lagging indicator survey feedback, and that really helps us generate future topics. Now I'm speaking about leading indicators. So I just framed our webinar into an example here. <laughs> uh, so th that gives us future topics that we can use and which we present on a quarterly basis. As I mentioned, our past webinars, they're on our website, which I'll show you on the next slide where we can find those. And it allows you to revisit any of our previous webinars that we have done. And we've added a little tool to basically to this webinar as well as any of our other webinars that are on YouTube. The process allows you to go on to uh, the, the YouTube page and at the bottom of the webinar, you'll see a spot where it allows you to click in and register to complete the quiz. And once you do that, you're able to get a certificate. And so that again, it's just a very short multiple cho choice type of quiz, which allows for measurement uh, of those competencies. So that's another tool that uh, that we can use as well as yourself to measure goal setting uh, when it comes to webinars, if that's part of your goals. So lastly, uh, this now gets us to the end of our webinar on safety goal setting. 
as mentioned, our webinar or our website is on the screen here. And this allows you to go in, take advantage of any of those free tools or resources that I spoke about. Uh, you'll see uh, various sections on our website where we have webinars recorded and many different downloadables. So feel free to take advantage of that. And if you do have a question, something may come to mind uh, next week or next month even. Well, I guess next month is tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, but feel free to always reach out to us. We're here to support you in your goal setting process. Any of our staff are available and willing to assist you in this journey, as well as any other journey uh, when it comes to our safety programs that we can be of assistance with. As mentioned, there is no additional charge for any of those services that we currently provide to our members. So with that, I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, mostly comments have came in. There were some good questions or good comments earlier about goal setting and training and uh, tracking and being accountable. So I appreciate those. And I appreciate you taking the time to join me and our staff this morning in our webinar on safety goal setting. And I'd like to thank you for your time and looking forward to seeing you coming into a future webinar. Thank you very much.